Hello, my love. What's going on? I am so excited for this topic because it is happening in real time for me um, and it has been happening. And I know that some of you, if you are pregnant or if you are going to be pregnant, this is going to be something you probably will experience. So we are going to talk all about pregnancy constipation, why it actually happens and the things that I have found that have been really helping me right now. So that is what we're talking about today. But before we get into that, I want to talk about like constipation in general. This was something that years ago when I was struggling, if you're new around here, because there's so many new listeners, if you are new, like, oh, I'm so happy you're here. But I, most of you who've been here for a while know my story, but I used to struggle with IBS. I had irritable bowel syndrome. So I was chronically bloated. I was constipated. I had no period. I had migraines, had facial hair growth, had weight gain, all this stuff going on. And it was so frustrating being constipated. And I haven't experienced that till I got pregnant pregnant since that time that was going on because I had since healed it. Right. I, you know, went back to school for nutrition. I started changing everything, like all the things. Right. And I forgot how like really uh, it's just so frustrating to feel constipated. So whether you're pregnant or not, if you're feeling constipated, I want to just acknowledge the emotional side of it um, because you just feel like it, what is going on? Like you feel like you have to go, but you can't, or you're sitting on a toilet bowl for so long and you're like, what is actually happening? So it's giving me like flashbacks because prior to pregnancy for years now, I had the most ideal poops, like the star of the show. I would poop two times a day, like clockwork within the first like 15 minutes of waking up. And then like an hour after lunch, they were picture perfect, exactly how it's supposed to be, like a banana shape, soft serve ice cream, like, yes, 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 that's what we want it to look like. There were some times like a year or so ago where things were a little off. And that's actually when I got a gut stool test done to see like a stool test done to see what was going on in my gut. I ended up having candida and a parasite and whatever. So anyway, I got all that healed. That's besides the point. But the point is, heading into pregnancy, I, for years, I was pooping so regularly and it was just like so normal for me. So when I became pregnant and all of a sudden I was feeling constipated again, I'm like, oh my God, I'm having flashbacks of literally sitting in the toilet bowl in the bathroom for so long, just trying to go and wasting so much freaking time. So I feel you, I get it. Now I'm personally already plant-based. So I've been plant-based. Um, I went vegetarian in 2000. 14 and I became fully plant-based in 2016. So that obviously was a huge factor in me healing my digestive issues and my constipation and stuff when all that was going on years and years ago. But heading into pregnancy, I was still plant-based, but that wasn't enough anymore. Okay? <laughs> that wasn't helping the constipation issue. So the reason, and, and there are so many things, like all of these tips, whether you're pregnant or not, this is of course going to support you with constipation. Um, but really I'm specifically speaking of pregnancy constipation and these extra things that we could do on top of it. If you're struggling with constipation, even if you're not pregnant, even if you are, but I highly recommend adding way more plants to your diet um, because that's where all the fiber is. But again, if you're already plant-based like I was and you got pregnant and you're like, um, what is really happening? I'm already having so much fiber. I don't understand what's going on. I feel you. And we're going to talk about the tips that have really been helping me. Um, so the, the, the issue, is, not the issue, but the reason why a lot of people experience constipation in pregnancy, and it was definitely worse for me in the first trimester. As of the, the time of this recording, I am 23 weeks pregnant. So in my first trimester, it was definitely worse than it is now. It's been kind of up and down now, and I'll talk a little bit more about it. I don't know what it's going to be like in the third trimester because I haven't gotten there yet. But the reason why this even comes about is from the really high progesterone levels you have when you're pregnant. Progesterone is the sex hormone that we actually create when we ovulate. And it's what holds onto and nourishes a pregnancy. It also supports your metabolism, your thyroid, your hair, your skin, your nails, your stress response, does so many different things. But specifically speaking of pregnancy, it's what holds onto and nourishes the pregnancy. So when you get pregnant, your progesterone levels keep on increasing. So you have an abundant amount of progesterone. You have way higher levels of progesterone than you do when you're not pregnant. Okay. Obviously, if things are going well and 
and you're having healthy pregnancy and all of that. Some people will experience in the first trimester if they, when they get their blood work done, that their progesterone levels are low and they have to take a progesterone suppository um, because it, it, in order to hold on to that pregnancy, we need to have high progesterone levels, right? So thankfully my progesterone levels were always awesome, super high. Everything was good, right? But so, and you want that, of course. I'm like, yes, I want the high progesterone levels. Of course, I want to hold on to this pregnancy, all the things. But the downside of it is that progesterone slows down your digestion and it slows down muscle contractions. So when you have really high levels of this, it's it's slowing everything down, which is good for the baby aside from obviously holding on to the pregnancy, but it's good because it slows down the rate at which you're digesting. So it gives your body more time to actually absorb more nutrients so that your body has the capacity to absorb as much as they can from food to then pass it on to baby as well as on to you. So it's really good for that purposes, but it's not so good for your pooping because it's not only is it slowing down the rate that you're digest digesting, but it's, it's like a relaxer in a way. So it relaxes those muscle contractions. So things, it's just not moving through as easily and as quickly. So that's one of the reasons why a lot of people experience constipation during pregnancy. Now, this was definitely more prominent for me in the first trimester. In the second trimester, things started, you know, evening out a little bit and I was definitely pooping more. And I'm going to talk about exactly what I mean. Like, I'm going to give you all the specifics because I want you to feel like you're not alone in this, if this is what you're going through. But the other thing, aside from the high progesterone levels, which is like pretty much like one of the main reasons why people do experience it, it could also be from the higher iron intake that you're taking with your prenatal. So I personally take the, um, oh my God, pregnancy brain also is a thing needed, the needed prenatal vitamins. I'm obsessed with them. I've talked with them a ton on this podcast. I will link them all below. I take the needed prenatals. And then um, once I became pregnant, I also added on iron to that. Um, and they have a supplement a se a separate from the prenatal that's an iron supplement because it actually absorbs better when it's not within the prenatal. It's one of the reasons why I love this company. So anyway, you of course need more iron when you're pregnant, your blood flow, you have like double the amount of blood flow going on. You need more iron for the baby, for the blood flow, for all the stuff, but that can also cause you to be a little bit more constipated. So it's depends on, you know, it could be, it's probably a mix of both things. In my opinion, it's a mix of the higher iron intake and the high progesterone levels. So that is why this is happening. Now in the first trimester, it was definitely worse where I, I had always gone every day, ever since I became pregnant, I, I always went to the bathroom every day. And I truly believe that that is because of how well I was pooping before pregnancy, how good my digestion was leading into pregnant uh, into pregnancy. So just because you're pooping every day doesn't mean that you're not constipated though, because I was still going every day, but it was not my usual amount. It was way less than I would normally go. And it was like the harder balls, like when you're pooping and not like softer, like a banana, like, like it was not like that. And it was a lot harder to actually go, um, heading into my second trimester where I'm at right now, it's definitely getting better. Cause I'm like figuring out the different hacks to do different things that are supporting me, which is why I'm literally doing this podcast in real time to talk to you about what I found that's really helpful. Um, I'm definitely going more. I am mostly going twice a day again now. Um, usually like it, when I wasn't pregnant, my first poop in the morning was always like the best one. Usually now it's kind of the opposite. Now it's like, I really only go a little bit in the morning. It's still like more so constipated feeling than usual. Like I feel like it's it's not like really that banana like, but then in the afternoon, it'll be like a much better poop. That's like kind of where I'm at right now. So um, it's definitely getting better. And I know it's because of these things that I'm doing also because usually this, the, uh, constipation does get better in the second trimester. And then I did hear that sometimes it gets worse in the third trimester because there's just like not a lot of room going on in there, but I'll keep you posted on how that goes. So anyway, that is what it was like for me. I was still going every day, but it was balls and it was hard to pass. If you're someone who's like really not going every day at all, and obviously implementing these tips that I'm going to talk about, but for sure, if you're not already plant-based, 
definitely increasing the amount of plants that you're consuming and for sure reducing your amount of dairy and meat to really support the movement and the flow of things going through because animal products don't have any fiber. Um, so we really want to make sure that we are having as much fiber as possible, um, not just for pooping purposes, but because and like for feeling like, you know, you don't want to feel constipated, but it's also from a, you know, health perspective, when we poop, we're eliminating toxins. Um, and we don't want those toxins and the metabolic waste and all of that to build up into our system because we're not eliminating properly. Um, so this is why this is such a huge thing for me that I was like, oh, I don't want to be constipated, not only because it's so frustrating, but also I don't want these toxins building up in my body. Um, so if you aren't going every day, and you're noticing that it's like, oh, it's so frustrating, really work on adding in more plants in general and reducing your animal consumption as much as possible. Or when you do, at least when you do have animal products, have way more plants on your plate than animal products to make sure that you are aiding in that digestion since there's no fiber in animal products. Okay. So um, the other thing before I actually get into tips that I want to talk about just from a pelvic floor perspective Supporting your pelvic floor is something that I'm really doing, working so much on in this pregnancy. I'm actually having an expert come on the show soon. I can't wait for her to come on and talk all about pelvic floor health um, because it's extremely important in pregnancy. Obviously, it's it, I'm not going to get into it because I'm going to have a whole podcast episode on it. But what I will say is if you are constipated, and I know it's so hard not to do this, like you want to just like force and like push to try and get whatever you can out that actually really negatively impacts your pelvic floor. It's putting a lot of pressure on it. Um, and it's, it's really not supportive for that. And we want to make sure our pelvic floor is as strong as possible, not only to support ourselves during pregnancy, but to have an easier time postpartum with recovery. So don't force anything to come out. Don't push it because you're going to negatively impact your pelvic floor. If it's not coming out, out, just let it be. And I know it's so hard, um, but that is just something that's going to really help your pelvic floor. So just do your best to not force and strain. Um, so you're not putting that, that pressure on your pelvic floor. Um, okay. So now let's get into the tips that have really helped me and try these on, see what works for you, see what doesn't. If you have experienced this and you found different tips that I haven't given that you are like, oh my God, this helped me a lot, please DM me. I will share it on my Instagram. I want to know what is working for you. And if you do try these, what actually helped you? Okay. So number one, you already know if you've listened to this for a while, I have warm lemon water every single morning. What I've always done over uh, the war the colder months, like the winter, like it is right now, if you're listening to this in real time, is I get fresh ginger. I peel Peel it with a spoon, take the skin off with a spoon and cut like little tiny slices of it. And I put like a little round slice of ginger root in the hot water when I, when I'm pouring the hot water in and then I put the lemon in there. I always did that even prior to pregnancy, just because it really supports your immune system even more. Um, and it, it stimulates your digestion, which is why it's really actually supporting me right now when with this whole constipation issue in pregnancy. So if you don't already do that, not only is it going to help with constipation, but it's also going to help with your immune system. And if you do ever experience nausea for preg in pregnancy, ginger is really helpful for that. I'm going to do a whole nother episode on, on nausea and stuff like that. But for right now, that is something that's really helpful because it adds warmth to your system and it really like puts more heat in the body. So it stimulates your digestion. So that is something you could easily add to your warm lemon water. If you're already doing that, highly recommend doing that. The next thing is with obviously drinking a shitload of water, right? Like the majority of your poop is water and you need so much more water during pregnancy because obviously you're sustaining not only your life, but you're the a whole baby's life and you have so much more blood flow. You have so much more going on. So we need so much water, but we don't just want to consume just plain water um, because your body doesn't always absorb just water. It needs electrolytes. It needs sodium to actually absorb it. Water flows where sodium goes. So getting a electrolyte powder that is actually, you know, it's pregnancy safe, of course. Needed has one. Um, I personally use LMNT, the letter L, letter M, the letter N, the letter T. I'll put the link below. I have no affiliation with them. I don't have a discount code for you, but I love them. I, I do that first, but the first thing I drink in the morning, which I actually talked about this on last podcast episode when I was talking about like just tips to make this lifestyle easier. I have that in my first water bottle in the morning to make sure that the first hydration I'm getting, I am soaking it all up. And there's other reasons too. You can go back to the other episode I did to hear more about that. But 
We want to make sure that we're absorbing the water that we are taking in so that it helps form our poop. So then it helps you poop more. So having water with electrolytes first thing in the morning has been super, super helpful. And then I also do um, a different type of electrolyte, Ultima Replenisher, it's called. Um, I'll put the link below again for all of this. So if you're, if you're driving or you're doing your laundry or whatever you're doing, all the links will be below. Okay. So um, the ultra replenisher, I do that one in my water bottle after lunch. So what has been really helpful for me is, and I'll talk to you about food in a second, but having that electrolyte water in the morning to really hydrate stuff, to get whatever poop's going to come out in the morning to help push it out, having that uh, first thing, then having the warm lemon water with ginger. Um, and I will even like drink the water while I'm in the bathroom, like going to the bathroom to just like help. Oh, I always bring water with me when I'm in there because I'm like, let me just like help move this process along. So that could just be another tip for you. Um, so that's like in the morning water. And then after I have lunch, I have another huge water bottle. I fill like my huge Yeti up with um, filtered water, obviously. And then I add one scoop of the Ultima Replenisher. I personally like the lemonade flavor. It's so freaking good. And I have noticed that after I have lunch, I have that whole water bottle with the, with the electrolytes. And if I go for a walk even, and again, this is going to depend on your work schedule and everything. If you go for a 10 minute walk after you eat, that always helps move things along because what support, again, we need to support our digestion way more than we ever have because the progesterone is slowing things down. So anytime that you could get some form of movement in after you eat is going to help move the food along, which is going to then help it move through your colon, your intestines, all of it more easily. So then you can more easily poop. So I have noticed that having lunch, having the ultimate replenisher, water bottle, like a half hour after I eat, dr drinking the full thing, going for a walk after that, it's like, yes, good to go. That is what I've noticed in my second trimester where it's like the best poop of the day is after I do that. So how can you incorporate that? I'll put the link to the electrolyte powder below. And even if it's a 10 minute walk, if you're working in an office, you just walk around your office for a little bit. You go to the further bathroom to just get a walk. You go up and down the stairs a little bit. You walk around your house doing some uh, like ch ch an errands, no, like uh, house chores. I hate calling it chores, but like whatever, house things. Just get your body moving after you eat for even just 10 minutes. It's going to help move that along. Um, and that's going to be really, really helpful for you. Movement in general is really important for helping your digestion. So how can you incorporate just more movement throughout your day instead of thinking of just like, okay, I'm going to my workout class in the morning and then I'm going to like sit at my desk for the rest of the day without any movement. How can you move your body more to stimulate that digestion? Yoga obviously is really important, but I just mean generally throughout the day, again, walking to a further bathroom, getting up in between Zoom meetings, um, like doing stuff around the kitchen, like after you eat, cleaning up a little bit. So you're just moving around a little bit. How can you get more movement in even just like pausing and stretching for five minutes? Any type of movement that you could get in throughout the day, the more, the better. And it's, I'm not saying like do 10 workouts a day. Obviously, you know, that's not the vibe. I'm just saying moving your body in some way is going to help push that food along more easily and then help you poop better. Okay. So movement in general is really helpful for that. Now, from a food perspective, obviously, like I said, plant foods have all, they all have fiber, but since I'm already plant-based, I'm like, okay, I need to focus zone in on really high fiber foods. The high fiber foods that I have noticed have made the biggest difference are flax seeds. So I'll uh, grind up flax seeds. I'll, I always buy them whole um, and then I'll like blend them up in the blender and I'll put two tablespoons at least in my breakfast. So like whether I'm having a smoothie for breakfast, whether I'm having oatmeal, um, I've been having a lot of oatmeal because it's colder right now. And so I like having something warm for breakfast, but flax seeds have so much fiber. And I've noticed that like it really helps get things moving. So how can you incorporate more flax seeds? Grind them up. Um, don't, I wouldn't suggest buying them ground up because they are, the oils are very sensitive. Um, so they can go rancid really quickly. So when you buy them whole, you could just grind up a little bit at a time in your blender and then you could incorporate them like that. Okay. So flax seeds have been incredible. Chia seeds, also amazing. Um, avocado. I always have a whole avocado a day, usually half with lunch, half with dinner, but that has a shitload of fiber, no pun intended, but it really, really helps. Um, and then the other, uh, oatmeal, like I said, is also really helpful. 
root vegetables. This has been the biggest thing where I've noticed such a huge difference. Um, sweet potatoes. Like I love Japanese sweet potatoes. It could be any type of sweet potato with the skin on having this for dinner. Sometimes I'll just, I'll go to the bathroom right after that. Having it for lunch will help me go to the bathroom after lunch, root vegetables as much as possible. Like root vegetables, meaning sweet potatoes, carrots, butternut squash, spaghetti squash, acorn squash, those have been so freaking helpful. The majority of what I have been doing are um, sweet potatoes because it's just easier for preparation purposes. You could cut them up, obviously, and you could um, bake them. What's even easier, uh, sorry, roast them. What's even easier is just getting the whole freaking sweet potato, poking some holes in it, throwing it in the oven, and then having a baked potato. Um, again, I love the Japanese sweet potatoes or regular sweet potatoes. I always recommend those, but with the skin on is crucial. Have to leave the skin on because that's where most of the fiber is. That has been so freaking helpful. Um, so again, you could do like just a meal idea is throwing those sweet potatoes in whole, you know, p- poking the holes in it and baking them at like four, I don't know, four hundred and five degrees for maybe 35, 40 minutes. And then uh, like cutting them open and doing kind of like a, a loaded sweet potato. Um, Chris and I, my husband love these. I mix them with, uh, I'll cook on the side while that's cooking, like black beans with um, tomatoes and corn, obviously all organic um, with sauteed kale or spinach or something like that topped with avocado topped with good planet vegan cheese. Like, and then after the potato is pretty much cooked, cut it open, put those toppings on there, put the cheese on there, put it back in the oven for like five, 10 minutes to melt the cheese. Oh, it's so good. And starting, you can even have a side salad with that. That is going to get things moving. Okay. So try that out. It has been really, really helpful for me. Um, apples have been also really helpful because again, they're a really high source of fiber. Specifically, they have soluble fiber, which is really helpful. So I'll usually have like an apple, um, with my lunch, like right before I eat lunch, that has been so amazing. These are things that I think have been really helping me go to the bathroom again, like, you know, a second time during the day, which we really want to be doing. So food purposes, again, if you are not already plant-based adding in just more plants in general is going to be supportive. If you are already mostly plant-based focusing on flax seeds, chia seeds, avocados, root vegetables with the skin on, apples, oatmeal, and beans. Um, Beans, obviously, from an iron standpoint, a protein standpoint, I have beans at least twice a day. Um, I have even before a pregnancy, but now especially because that protein content, that iron content, it's really, really important. And there's a shitload of fiber. So those are the foods to focus on to help you get things moving along, okay? Um, And then what you could also do, I haven't done this, but what you could also do my gynecologist was actually telling me about this because he's like, you could always take Miralax. I'm like, no, thank you. I'm not taking medication. Um, but you could get prunes and you could uh, put them in a pot with water and like boil them down and kind of make like a concoction out of it, like jam almost. You could throw it in a smoothie or you could like put it on toast or something like that. Obviously prunes are something that is going to help get things moving along. I have not done that yet though, but I'm sure that that would be really helpful as well. Um, from a supplement perspective, obviously, hopefully you're taking all the suggested supplements for when you're pregnant. I have a whole supplement training on that. I'll put that below too, if you're interested in that, but miracle worker magnesium is something I always take every single night. I'll do like a big heaping scoop of it now to make sure that I'm getting enough magnesium, which also helps your digestion. And then sometimes I will also take this uh, product called detoxy. Um, it's from Kimberly Snyder. I checked with my doctor. He said it's pregnancy safe, but please always check check with your healthcare provider before you take any supplements, especially when you're pregnant to make sure that they say it's safe for you to take. Um, but it's a magnesium, um, and like nascent oxygen supplement. I took this like few times during the week before pregnancy, just to really help clear things out. It's also anti-aging. It makes sure that you are like getting everything out of your system, not in like a way where it's not habit forming. It's not a laxative. It doesn't cause diarrhea, nothing like that. It just really helps move things along. Um, and what I've noticed is it definitely doesn't work as well during pregnancy as it did before pregnancy, but it does help. Um, so you could look into that. I would take it a couple times a week, maybe like twice a week. I haven't taken it in a while because things have been like a lot better just with the tips that we were just talking about, but something you could definitely look into. I'll put the link below for that. I have no affiliation with them, um, but it is a really great supplement that you could try out, but please check with your doctor first before you start taking anything when you're pregnant. Okay. Um, the last two things that I will talk about for this is a squatty potty, which if you don't already have one, 
this is something I've been using for years, literally like, oh, at least a decade. I've had a squatty potty. I think, I think it's been out for that long, but I feel like I've had it for so long. This, if you don't know what this is, it's like a little like stool that goes like around the bottom of the toilet bowl that you put your feet on to put your body in the natural position to be in to where it moves like your, your intestines or colon in a, in a way that it more easily flows out. Um, instead of just having like your feet flat on the floor and the way that your pelvis tilts, it doesn't support easy flow of things. So having a squatty potty has been life-changing, highly recommend getting that. Um, and then the last thing is acupuncture. Um, I am such a huge proponent of acupuncture. I've been going for years and years and years, and I'll tell him like, Hey, I'm struggling a little bit with constipation and he'll do specific points to help with, with constipation. And literally I go to the bathroom almost every single time after I leave his office, because I'll tell him like, Hey, I'm feeling a little like backed up and he will do some points and it will really help. So there's so many things in here that I just went over with you, but these are all the things that over the last 23 weeks I have found to be super, super helpful. Take what makes sense with you. Try them out. If you're going to try anything, I would definitely suggest the root vegetables for sure. The sweet potatoes with the skin on it, the flax seeds, the apples, the oatmeal, um, the water with the electrolytes, moving your body. I'm like, okay. I'm just listening literally everything I just said, but it's really, really, really freaking powerful. Go back and listen to this again if you need to. Um, I hope this helps you. I wanted you to know that if you are experiencing pregnancy constipation, it's totally normal. You're not alone. There are things that we could do naturally to help ourselves so you can avoid taking medication. Um, there is also a tea called Smooth Moves, um, organic. I think it's... Uh, uh, Yogi brand. I bought it. I haven't used it yet, but I bought it because I was like, okay, if things don't, you know, if, if it gets like worse or whatever, I'm going to, I'm going to try it out. And I, of course I check with my doctor. He said it was okay. Always check with your doctor for this too. Um, but it's called smooth moves, um, organic tea because my whole thing was, I, first of all, of course, want to be pooping. So I want to get the toxins out of my body, but I do not want to take medication while pregnant. Um, so I'm like, I'm doing everything I possibly can. And it has been really, really helpful. So I hope this is helpful for you please reach out to me and let me know what you think, what you try out, what has been helpful for you. I am so grateful for you. If you are pregnant and you're listening to this, I hope you're feeling so amazing. If you're not pregnant and you're listening to this, but you're hoping to be pregnant, save this for later so you can come back to it because you might not remember all these tips when the time actually comes. But I'm so grateful for you. I love you so much and I will talk to you soon.